All right, everybody, we're back here live on the Sea Island Morning Show. I tell you, we had just spoke with Spencer Davis. Spencer Davis uh, just gave us a, a great offer. Make sure you uh, dial that number to get your uh, your free estimate in reference to generators and things of that nature. And then listen, everyone, today, if you're just tuning in, our topic, Why Hairdressers Are Secure. And we're going to talk about that article in just a second, wanted to just give a couple of announcements to remind everyone that our summer series classes uh, starts um, this week, next weekend. Our summer series classes, if you haven't registered yet, the classes are open to the public. There are free classes in reference to makeup artistry, and there's classes in reference to hairstyling. This is open to the public. They're not even $50, and some of them are absolutely free. You have to go to the website either bennettcareerinstitute.org or t-h-e-c-a-l-a-n morningshow.com also i just wanted to send a shout out everyone know that um, i am the proud owner of four salons as well as it was five but we uh, combined one as well as the bennett career institute and i just wanted to send a special shout out to uh, marvez bowers this morning he is the manager at the um, sea island barber salon at 923 U Street Northwest and they implemented a professional day where they all had bow ties and dress shirts and slacks on and Friday it was hot as Cootie Brown I said Lord on my soul uh, Lord on my soul but I tell you I give a, a, a big shout out to Marvez Bowers um, because what we what the ultimate goal everyone is to continue to have a professional uh, uh, industry and oftentimes when we when when barbershops are depicted uh, it's not in a good light it's always in a negative connotation where a lot of confusion and chaos is going on but I'm telling you we want you to stop by 923 U Street Northwest it's right across from the Vermont Avenue U Street subway station uh, and come to the Sea Island Salon. It's on two levels, professional barbers there uh, to train and to uh, enlighten the people as well as awesome service. So we wanted to do that. And then my final shout-out, we got MD on the line, but my final shout is to everyone, listen to me really good. I want you to, and a lot of my listeners, Alonzo, they tell me that they're not on the computer. I said, Lord have mercy. Now, we're in 2012, and you're not on the computer. And some of you grandmamas, you need to know how to get on that computer and get automated. But we want you, everyone, to vote back. Chef Todd Allen, he is our celebrity chef. He was on the Food Network. Uh, he was on the Food Network station, and uh, he was voted off. And now they vote back one person, and uh, they're asking us to vote on who should be um, voted back in, and we want Chef Todd Allen. So I want you to do me a favor and go to www.foodnetwork.com so we can be able to vote back in our Chef Todd Allen so he can be able to be back on the Food Star Network. All right, everybody, that was my announcements for the day. Praise the Lord. That was my announcement. All right, everybody, now let's get directly into the topic. We got MD on the line. He's our first caller. MD is the Director of Admissions at the Bennett Career Institute. And today we're talking about why hairdressers are secure. That was in the wall. It was on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. I thought I would flip and do uh, uh, cockwheels. I told Alonzo, I told MD to run out and get me five copies. He came back with two. We won't go there. Uh, but MD, talk to me this morning. Why do you feel that the Wall Street Journal came out with this article at this time right at the a day that we talked about jobs from uh, the job numbers came out from the president and all of that, and they went directly into hairdressers. Talk to me. Well, good morning, uh, C. Allen. I'll say this. As the director of admissions here at Bennett Career, what I do is I interview each potential student coming into the program. Now, you know what's a common thread with a lot of people that I interview? A lot of people have been laid off. These people, these are professional people. These are people with degrees, like teachers, people who work with computers, law firms, hospitals. they all been laid off. But can I say this thing, Alan? How many times has your stylist, your barber, been laid off? Okay. Fired, yes, but never laid off. All right. And then, 
especially in this area, in the D.C., Maryland, and Virginia area, there's a hair salon and barbershop on every corner. So there is no reason, this is what I tell my students, there is no reason if you have a license that you should not be working in this area, any, any area. I say you should always be working, whether it's in southeast of Singapore, northeast of Nigeria, as long as you have your license and you're doing hair, you should always be working. Exactly. Now, in the article, MD, it talked about how how we uh, it says that according to the occupational employment statistics, hairdressers, hairstylists, cosmetologists, uh, cosmetologists had increased by four percent, which is a large number of people who actually went into the cosmetology field. And another part of the article, it talks about personal services. This is something that we have been teaching to the students for years. It said, now listen to this, everybody. Back in the early 2000s, it said that, I'm sorry, back in the late 1990s, it said that in the, in, in the, in the millennium, in the 2000 era, people are, it's going to be a rise for personal services. It's going to be one of the largest things out here is people are going to want more personal services. And think about it. Now, you know, before we never heard of makeup artists and hairstylists traveling with pastors. We never heard of people um, because of the technology age where and everything is going high def, where people are looking for makeup artists just to go on television to just do a, do a report. But I say, I'm sorry to interrupt, C. Allen, but I tell my students also, like, again, when you do hair, you should always be working, first of all. People need to get their hair done when they're looking for a job. They need to get their hair done once they get the job. You even need to get your hair done when you're dead. Somebody has to go over to the funeral home and do your hair before they bury you. So you got customers when they're living. You got customers even when they're dead. So then let me ask you this question then. Can you explain to me why? Because this is one thing I wanted to tackle today. Oftentimes, we, 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 people come in the door to register because they were forced by their counselors and people who say, well, you're not college bound, so go to a beauty school to get a trade. And, uh, and oftentimes, you have people who come into the door uh, and it's almost like, they already are set up for failure because they come into the door because they're pushed in the door. How do you deal with those kind of people that they feel as though, well, because you may not be educated or you may not have um, the intellect, you need to go to beauty school? Well, I tell that, first of all, cosmetology and barbering is more than just working on your mannequins and working in the salon and the barbershop. There is a book portion of the curriculum which is called theory. You're learning physiology, biology, chemistry, anatomy. You're learning, med you know, medical terminology, That's right. the, the same courses that you would be taking if you were going to school to be a doctor. We're learning those same things here in cosmetology and barbering school. You're going to be tested every week. You, you're going to be standing on your feet. You're going to be working on your mannequins. So, it's, so I don't understand why grandmamas, I know you listening, why you want to send your lazy daughter to beauty school just to get her out the house, to have her th uh, thinking, you know, just to get her out your hair when you're not understanding that it is just as if it was going to another university or college. These are things that you're going to have to learn. Mr. Wells just said it, anatomy, physiology, cells in the four systems. All of these things are we need to know the, the muscles, the bone structure. All of these things we have to understand and listen. Listen to this, MD. Everybody under my voice, listen. Many of you do not know this. A new federal law had just passed. And it started July 1. If you do not have a high school diploma or GED, you are no longer eligible to receive Title IV funds to receive a cosmetology or barber certificate. Right. So what happens is that if you don't have a high school diploma or GED, you cannot receive financial aid to come to cosmetology or barbering school. Now, so what does that mean for all of the dropouts, all of the people who dropped out of high school and you, you normally you would come in and you would pass an ability to benefit. It's called ATB and they allow you to come in school. Those days are over with. 
you now have to go back to somewhere and get your high school diploma or GED if you want to get into the cosmetology and barber field. And I think that that's one of the best things that could happen. If it forces people to go back to school to get their high school diploma or their GED if they want to continue their education. If and for, that's not just for a, a two-year program of cosmetology school. That's anywhere, especially if you're trying to receive financial aid to help pay for your tuition. Exactly. Can I say this real quick, C. Real Alan, quick. Before I go? Gotta go to commercial. Yes, sir. Right. Cosmetology and barbering, you only have to be at school for 1,500 hours, which means that if you go to school full-time, you're only here 12 months. If you go part-time, 18 months. It's not a long time. People spend 1,500 hours on Facebook, at the mall, at the club. Come spend 1,500 hours here with us so that way we can train and educate you. So when you go to the board, it should not be if you get your license. It should be when you get your license. People are going to get their hair done if they don't do nothing else. We all have family members who are going to get their hair cut, who are going to get their hair done if they don't do nothing else. It's a great skill. You'll always be working. But if you want to get your license, you have to be trained and educated first. And then a career is the place. Can All I just right. Throw that in real quick. <laughs> All right. Thank you, MD. We got to <laughs> go to commercial you, break. All right. You're listening to the C. Allen Morning Show, Beauty Talk, Beauty Education, Beauty Talk Radio. We'll be right back after these messages.